Rash, bald face, blasphemy. Question everything. I find it extremely hard to imagine. Open your eyes. It is quite all right to be an atheist. The fastest growing group of people in the country has been measured as being those who have no belief or who are atheists. You don't have to be apologetic or quiet about it. Challenge the opposition. You see religion on a hundred fronts losing the argument. And start thinking. This is The Thinking Atheist Worldwide. It's amazing how many emails I've gotten from people on the issue of non-religious weddings. It's even more amazing how many of those emails came from guys. Men proudly showing off their wedding photos. You know, here's my bride. Here's what we did. Here's how the ceremony went. It was really amazing. And sharing their stories. And I found myself smiling. Many people sent photographs from, uh, from the, the, the ceremonies and really clever, really creative, really fun stuff. And uh, we're going to talk a lot about uh, how to have a wedding, what experiences were like for those who are non-believers who got married. Did they have it in a church to keep family happy? Did they come up with another creative idea? Did they go to uh, a chapel somewhere? Did they uh, have an outdoor thing? Did they get a justice of the peace or a judge or who's qualified to do weddings? We're going to talk about all that stuff and a lot of, of your stories, a lot, a lot of email. And I'm going to get as many of those in as I can, because some, some very, um, very inspiring stories came in and just interesting stories to listen to. And I uh, sort of made a pact with myself to try to, to share as many of those as I could. Around the bottom of the hour, we're going to be talking to Matt Dillahunty of the Atheist Experience and Beth Presswood, his wife of, see, when they get married, it was last uh, October. So they're still newlyweds. And we're going to talk to them. Obviously, they didn't have a religious <laughs> wedding. You know, they didn't have uh, any sort of superstitious nonsense in that particular ceremony. Aaron Raw officiated the wedding, and the, the photographs on uh, Matt Dillahunty and Beth Presswood's Facebook pages are just priceless. My first email is from Pat and Tamara. Pat says, I doubt my wife or I will be able to call into the show tonight, so I thought we'd drop you an offline note about our own experience. Back in the late 90s, my then fiance and I were planning things out for our wedding after having dated for about five years. I had just finished grad school and she was between undergrad and veterinary school. We were living in Chicago suburbs at the time, not far from where she grew up. She was an atheist and I would describe myself as more agnostic turning the corner. I hadn't attended church more than a couple times since high school, always at the behest or begging of my parents when I just couldn't find a polite way out of it. At any rate, I'd always assumed I'd be getting married in a church, just because, well, that's what everyone does. My fiancé, on the other hand, was having none of that, and she pointed out to me it would be hypocritical to do so, not to mention, as she put it, she'd probably be struck by lightning if she walked through the doors. A private joke between us for quite some time. So her parents found time at a country club nearby, and we planned for an outdoor wedding on the veranda overlooking the nice course, and then a reception immediately following inside the adjoining nice dining room. We started the wheels turning with the photographer and the baker, etc. And then my parents got wind of the plan. I should say here that my parents are solid Lutherans. My dad has been a deacon in the church since I was little, my mother often teaching Sunday school. She's a public school teacher by trade. And the original pastor of the church lived two doors down from us. Having said all that, religion was something that was done in church for us, not really at home, and virtually never discussed outside of church settings. So while I wouldn't say my family was overly religious, they certainly had their solid core that came more from tradition than from any kind of, quote, close personal relationship with God. So when my parents were informed of the wedding plans, they were confused. 
and I think perhaps felt a bit betrayed. They offered to find a, quote, nice Lutheran church in your area for us and take care of all the arrangements, etc. Well, you can imagine my soon-to-be wife's reaction to this intrusion into her day. Me, being the kind of person who doesn't like to make waves, was trying to find a way to compromise somehow that wouldn't have my family hating my wife or vice versa. Over the course of several phone conversations with my parents, I was given a few guilt trips about how my elderly grandparents wouldn't understand and why wouldn't I just do it for their sakes. Or my father saying that I should do it for my mother, as if he didn't have any stake in it. But through my wife's tenacity and partly my own stubbornness, we stuck to our guns and moved forward. We got the name of a local judge from some mutual acquaintances that found he was very easy to work with and more than happy to perform this ceremony for us. We'd already had several friends get married in somewhat non-traditional ways, so we knew we need to do 98% of the groundwork ourselves, which of course included setting up the music and writing our own vows. We went one further with the wedding party. My wife's best friend was a guy, not a woman, so she wanted to have a man of honor instead of the traditional maid or matron of honor. Couldn't very well dress him up in a bridesmaid's dress, and the rest of the women said they didn't much feel like purchasing a dress they may or may not ever wear again, so they all agreed to wear tuxes. So everyone, standing up, were in identical tuxes, minus the judge doing the officiating in his black robes. Turns out that when you strip out the homilies, the sermons, and guilt trips, and everything else out of the actual ceremony, there wasn't a lot to say. <laughs> but the core essence of will you be with me from here on out, so to speak. As such, we have to laugh a little when we watch the video taken of the ceremony as it lasted 11 minutes, 11 seconds from the time the grandparents were seated till the time they walked out. Perhaps one of the shortest ceremonies we've been to, but considering it was mid-July and the temperature outside on the veranda was nearing 100 degrees, everyone thanked us for the brevity and we all adjourned to the air conditioning dining room for the uh, dinner and the fun that followed. After all the rigmarole leading up to it, things came off pretty well, and I don't think anyone was offended. We had a good time, and that was what was most important. It was harder being as young as we were to stand up to family and just say, this is our wedding, and we're doing it the way we would like. But in the end, it was so worth it. It also helped me a bit further down the road in standing up to family and tradition and truly becoming the atheist in my own mind that I am today. Thank you for letting us share our story, Seth. Pat and Tamara out of Michigan. It's a great letter and a great way to kick off the show. Thanks so much for being a part of it. We're talking about secular weddings, and I'll go right to the phones right now. Three, two, one. You're on the Thinking Atheist podcast. Who is this? Hi, my name's Jessica. Hi, Jessica. Talk to me. Are you engaged? Are you recently married? I got married on Sunday. This past Sunday? Yeah, two <laughs> wait, days ago. Wait, you got married two days ago? Yes. Congratulations, Jessica. Thank you. So did you have a non-religious ceremony? Tell me about it. Well, um, we had it out in a garden, so it was not in a church. And I wouldn't say that we, like, said anything specifically, like, anti-God or whatever, but we just didn't include any blessing, really. We, we sort of had a blessing, but it wasn't like, and God blessed you. It was more of just her saying some kind words to us and giving us, I guess, overall luck during the ceremony. And then we said our vows, and they were just very, I promise to do this, and I promise to do this. And it, um, we had a knot tying ceremony, which was, they put the ribbon we, we had a ribbon, and when they put it over our hands, and they kind of, like, bound our hands together and then tied it into a knot as we pulled it. And that um, apparently is something, a Celtic tradition that started the term tying the knot. So I really wanted to include that because I felt like it was an old tradition that people don't really do very much, and it's not religious. And I just thought it would be really nice, and it was. And it was about you and your sweetheart, right? I mean, it was about, it was your day. You weren't chained to the expectations of others, right? You got a chance to make it the wedding that you wanted for yourself, right? Right. Um, we, 
have a very religious family, and I don't know. I mean, they're very polite, nice people, so I'm not really sure how they reacted to us not mentioning God or having, because my cousin got married a couple of years ago, and it was all about God. It was just God's first in the marriage, God this. Um, they actually had our preacher from our church who was the officiate, and he was, like, giving them advice about staying together forever and not ever getting divorced and all this stuff, which I thought was just awful to include in the marriage, you know, like, why are you talking about divorce right now? But, um, yeah, so it was very just like our promises to each other and just, I thought it was very sweet. And one of the vows was actually at the very end, she asked him and me to say, you promise to let love them as themselves and let, you know, my fiance's name is Derek, let Derek be Derek and Jessica be Jessica. I really like that part of it. Well, congratulations to you both and say congratulations to Derek and have a wonderful honeymoon. Thanks for sharing your story. Thank you. All right. Take care, Jessica. Bye. Who was uh, the comedian who talked about husbands and wives? And this is the bit. I, I Don't come after me on this. <laughs> but uh, his bit was women marry a man accepting the stuff that they hate going, I can change him. Mm -hmm. I can change him. And men don't change. And men marry women going, I hope she never changes. And she changes all the time. <laughs> she's up, she's down, she's left, she's right. <laughs> you know? So it's funny to hear uh, say, fall in love with who they are, not who you wish in your mind you want them to be or what you hope you can fix them into being in the future. Make sure you love the person that uh, that you're with. When she talked about tying the knot, I, I saw a wedding a few years back that was interesting. I, I have a problem. I have a few problems with with some weddings. You know, I really do support and encourage marriage. I mean, I really do. I mean, you don't have to do it wherever, church or wherever. There's a few things that drive me nuts. One is the lack of original thought that goes in. And I'm not talking about just tradition. I think tradition certainly has its place. But when you see enough weddings, they all, I mean, you can pick them out of a crowd. It's like they used the wedding handbook. Shouldn't a wedding between two unique and very complex human beings be about them, reflecting them and who they are? And, uh, you know, I've been to some and it's, I mean, every wedding is they open up with a, uh, with the typical da 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 will you shoot me in the head so I can be put out of my misery kind of a deal. And then the other they walk everybody down. They walk the grandparents. They walk the parents down. And then they walk the pee. And there's children with the flowers. And then the the bridesmaids dresses invariably were picked out purposefully to make all of the women look pregnant. I don't know why they choose these styles of dresses. But a time and again, they'll pick them out and I go, either they're looking for the most cheap ass material they can possibly find, or they want everyone in the wedding party on the bride side to look pregnant. I don't know why that is. And then the pastor comes out and he does, you know, some greeting and then they do the unity candle. And then that's, you know, Shania Twain from this moment. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? The wedding march is the same. Everything's the same. It's like they just, just phoned it in. And and I know you can't tell a bride that because they put their heart and soul into it. <laughs> you know, they were choosing the candles and the flowers and the dresses and this and that. And it was all, but at the end, shouldn't it be a uniquely personal thing? And, and it's the best weddings I've been to, first of all, have not been the long ones. Jeez, I saw one. It was at a Pentecostal church. This was, wow, 19... 90, 92, 93, three pastors giving three unique messages. And by the end, uh, in fact, you know what? I, I, uh, I was the DJ at the, uh, at, so I'm, so I was working and I was waiting for the reception to start because that's when my cue was to, to jump in, crank up the tunes and the wedding and the reception all happened in the same hall. And I'm telling you by the time, by the middle of the second preacher. I was thinking, where's the wine? <laughs> I need the alcoholic beverages quick, please. We'll call it communion. Just numb the pain. And the, the wedding, the ceremony itself was like, it was almost two hours long. 
please. I saw a wedding a couple of years ago where they started the, the ceremony by doing a slideshow of each of the bride and the groom. And it was amazing. It was, it was what it needed to be. I and mean, they, they showed the, the bride from her earliest years as a baby being held by her mother. And so as people were kind of filtering in, they, they played some of their favorite songs and they showed this sort of chronology of their lives. Baby to little girl. She was in elementary school and she's coloring and she's playing on the swings. And then she's now she's old enough to drive. And then she's in college. And, and then they do the same thing with him. And then they finish with some slides or photographs of the two of them together, sharing their lives. And it was, it was unique and personal. Everyone found themselves smiling and no one felt like they had just, they had just phoned it in, but it was really something memorable. And those are my favorite. I had a guy I went to high school with, had a denim wedding. They, they got married in overalls, overalls, denim overalls, like Green Acres is the place to be. I mean, that's exactly what it was like. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of unique weddings out there. Kim sent me an email and said, I wondered if other folks went out of their way, as I did, to find a master of ceremonies who would agree to conduct a religion-free wedding. My husband and I married in Fredericksburg, Virginia, where, not too unlike Oklahoma, where I live, there's a church on every corner. Took a lot of phone calls, tons of reaching out to other people in the search for a person who would finally agree to remove any reference to religion. Just take it out of the wedding. We finally found a master of ceremonies, went over the script line by line. Kim says we also removed any references to being subordinate. You know, the thou shalt obey each other dribble. In the end, it was perfect. We were very glad we decided to take the time to find someone willing to marry us the way we wanted to be married. As far as we saw it, this wedding was all about us anyway, isn't it, Kim? Thanks for the message. Let's go back to the phone. 775, you're on the Thinking Atheist podcast. Who is this? This is Wes, and I'm actually calling in for a bit of advice. Me and my fiancé are getting married this August, and uh, we live in Reno, Nevada. So we've gone to uh, one of the local casinos, the Circus Circus, to get married. And uh, we were sitting there, and we were telling them that, well, she's an atheist. I'm not really Christian, per se. I mean, I don't believe in a god, but I still have a, a bit of religion going. And... Uh, they told us that the only ones they had that would come in and do this would be a Christian preacher. And the thing is, I do very mean things to Christian preachers. So I'm really worried as to what to do on this. And um, Well, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Hang on just a second. When you say that you, are, you, you don't really believe in God, but you're kind of hanging on to religion, are we talking about you enjoy I'm the a shaman. I, I believe in totem spirits. I believe in the spirits of my ancestors. It, but I don't believe that there's some big booger man in the sky who's going to punish me for doing wrong. And you're marrying a total non-believer. Pretty much. Well, how does she feel about the spirit of Grandpa floating around the, the ceremony? I mean, does she tolerate you? She ignores you? me. She ignores me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, does it ever get heated? Come on, I know you guys no, must sit over the dinner heated. table and go, you are batshit crazy. No one says oh, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. There'll be times where she'll look at me at the dinner table and go, you're batshit crazy, you know that? And I'll look at her and go, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I mean, how else do you explain it? Well, I, I, I support I can't. honesty in a relationship. I think that's very healthy. Just say it out loud. Hell, I know people have been married for a... Uh, People been married for decades, and they still say it to each other. <laughs> well, the thing is, me and her have been together for five years now, six years. We had a baby together, and uh, she was born stillborn. And everybody thought that that would be the end of our relationship, and it wasn't. So I figure if we can live through that, we can live the rest of our lives together. Well, how do shamans, I mean, how does that culture normally unite a man and a woman in holy matrimony? I mean, do you call down your spirit animal? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying what, there has to be some protocols in place for that group of people. I have.
have a ceremony written out because I have performed a uh, wedding ceremony for a couple who didn't want a Christian, typical Christian, but mainly it's it's a very tailored thing. Uh, it, it's how do I want to put this? It's it's uh, we thank the spirits for being here. We we welcome them into this circle and to bless this union type thing and may may your ancestors look kindly upon you and then I let them babble on. Then you break out the the, the incense and the peyote and, and have the no, reception no incense, is what you're saying. No incense, no peyote, but I shake my stick at them and say, You're married, go away. <laughs> is, there any, is there any pipe smoking of any kind or uh... No, 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 no. Uh, this is more of a Celtic tradition as as opposed to a uh uh, Native American tradition. Is anyone naked during the process here, or I mean, is there any? Actually, the bride and groom that I that I that I got married, they went sky clad. I did not. <laughs> sky clad. Uh, that's what it's called. Is when you go naked to the ceremony, they 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 went sky clad. Are you just completely full of shit? Are you just a total? Nope. Are you a fake? And you're just no, yanking sir, my chains. I am not a are, are you the real thing? I am the real thing. Okay, so you believe in now? Do you believe in it because you enjoy telling people you believe in it and you like to get the reaction, like you got from me, where I'd sort of blanch and say, Whew. or are you a true believer? Do you really think there is I a spiritual? There's a I, spiritual uh, plane out there, and your ancestors, when they died, became part of that sort of consciousness. You really do believe it? Yes, I do. I, I believe it wholeheartedly. When you say you do bad things to Christian preachers, what do you mean? Do you mean you'll sabotage them during the ceremony? Do you mean something no. else? Uh, the prime example I have of this is I grew up on a ranch. We butchered our own beef. And one day my cousin calls up, the, uh, the Mormons are coming, the Mormons are coming. And so me and a buddy were sitting around, and I just looked at him and said, "I want to, you want to play a practical joke on the uh, Mormons? He says, yeah. We tied a plastic bag around his waist. We piled up, because we had just, we had just slaughtered our own cow, we piled up some entrails on him. I bloodied up a knife, my jeans, and my shirt. They came up, they knocked on the door. I ripped the door open. I've got this knife in my hand, and I go, what? I'm busy. And he's sitting there, help. He's gone mad. Save me. They took off, never came back. Uh, so so your lady, I mean, she's got herself quite a prize here. You know, that's what my, <laughs> my first thought is, is that, you know, I mean, we need to have you cloned. My second <laughs> thought is, is that if you two are able to live around this particular, say, Grand Canyon that stands between you when it comes to spiritual belief. It doesn't sound to me like you're the kind of guy who really cares a whole lot about what anybody else thinks. Why don't you guys just go find a judge, sign on the dotted line, and then you guys can go, you know, well, you guys can go thing, be sky clad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the thing is, she wants the fancy wedding. And like I said, I'm afraid I'm what I'm going to do to the preacher. So. Honestly, you know what? If, if you're for real, and I'm still dubious, if you're for real, if, if it doesn't really make any difference to you, you know, give the lady what she wants. You guys go see a justice of the peace and have a wonderful life. Uh, I can put her on the phone if you want. She can tell you I'm real. <laughs> <laughs> Is she yeah, right? Is she fact, right there? Look, I, I'm yeah, not going to spend too much more time on you here, but is she right there? She's right here. Let me turn down the Does she? Now, I don't want to ambush her. Hi. I'm Seth, and you are on the air with the Thinking Atheist radio podcast. I know. I've been shaking my fist at him. What is your name? I'm Kitty. We act, I've actually called in before when you had the show on sex and religion. Well, I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but when is the last time Wes had a CT scan? Because <laughs> I, I have some concerns <laughs> that he may need to make another appointment. <laughs> When he found out he had diabetes. <laughs> All right. So, so are, are you a true non-believer and you're telling me a legitimate story that you two are getting married in the fall and you would like a traditional ceremony and he is really a shaman? He is really a shaman. I am a complete non-believer. I have been a non-believer for 
oh God, at least the last 10 years of my life. So what, what's the story on you two? This is a pretty, pretty big thing to overcome. Are you both just kind of passive about it? How do you reconcile that? Well, one of the ways we reconcile it is we pretty much don't talk about it. We both enjoy, we enjoy listening to a lot of the atheist shows. And um, we'll sit there, we'll discuss, and he'll say, well, I think this, and it's like, I think this, we'll have a nice little debate, and then we're done. You guys really love each other, huh? Yeah. Well, I buy that. When you've been through, like he said, the loss of our daughter, when you go through stuff like that. Wait a minute, wait a minute, hang on, hang on, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. You you lost a daughter? Yeah, um, pretty much what happened was I got pregnant about three years ago. And she was stillborn. We were about a week away from her actual due date. Okay, well, this entire call has just changed in tempo because I just went yeah. from from having some fun at Wes's expense and yours a little bit to speaking about a very real tragedy in your lives. Yeah, it, it was a very real tragedy, and we had each other there. When you have something like that, that you can latch on to, religion doesn't matter. I buy it. And you know what? I, I appreciate the call, both of you. And, and for whatever happens in the fall, whether it's outside, inside, whether it's in a church or it's under the haze of smoke somewhere, <laughs> you know? <laughs> no one's like it's going to be under the haze of smoke. Whatever it is, whether you're sky clad or what have you, I wish you both the very best and a very happy life together. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Seth. Take care of yourself. All right. All righty. Bye-bye. Man, I don't even know what to do with that. <laughs> I'm just unprepared and unqualified. I'm going to have to go back and listen to the playback later on and, and, and try to digest exactly what happened. There was this weird potpourri of, of <laughs> I don't know what. Uh, let's see. Uh, 610. Hi, you're on the Thinking Atheist podcast. Who's this? Uh, hi, Seth. It's John. How are you? John, you're not part of any odd rituals or uh, no, anything no. involving frontal nudity or uh, anything like that today, are you? Just goats. All right. <laughs> okay, I'm uh, just double checking. What's your perspective on the non-religious wedding? Talk to me. Well, uh, my wife and I had a, a pretty unique atheist wedding uh, recently, back in October. We, uh, we both live in Pennsylvania, and uh, it was both our second marriage, so uh, we uh, we talked about what we were going to do for the wedding. You know, we weren't real sure. Uh, we did, definitely didn't want to have a church wedding or anything big. So what we decided to uh, do was look at you know we, we looked for humanist celebrants uh, to see if there were any of those in our area, and uh, you know there weren't. They were too far away. We looked at some private people to uh, to do a you know a little ceremony for us and. Yeah, they they looked like they were pretty expensive, so you know, we were kind of undecided on that. Uh, what we ended up looking at, though, was called self-uniting marriage. Have you heard of that? Well, I hadn't until I checked my email this week, and I was reading about how some people can actually authorize themselves to marry themselves to someone else. Is that what you guys did? Yeah, that's what we did. So we, we looked into it, and what we found was, you know, apparently the laws were put in place a long time ago for the Quakers. So we, uh, we started to go down the path, and we went to our local courthouse, and uh, we went to get the marriage license. We sat down in front of the, uh, the girl at the, uh, the office there and says, hey, we want to do a self-uniting marriage. And her, uh, her eyes kind of bugged out, and I was like, oh. And she went off to find some paperwork, came back, and she confided in us that we were the first couple that ever did that. And she uh, never thought she'd have to get that paperwork. So as soon um, as you sign, you are then immediately considered husband and uh, wife? Well, you had to have a couple witnesses sign. Uh, so we ended up having both of our mothers uh, sign the, uh, the marriage certificate on the day we had the wedding. Um, it was a little disconcerting, though. They gave us a form uh, when we applied for the uh, marriage license. That they, well, not a form, but just a little leaflet that says, uh, you know, we're not responsible and we're warning you that, uh, you know, certain businesses such as insurance could deny you uh, services, you know, because they may not see this as a valid marriage. So it's a, it's a legal marriage, but it's not necessarily a legal marriage. That seems like a I didn't huge... quite understand it because yeah. you know, as long as you have the paper that says you're married, you know, companies and businesses should be able to, you know, have to hold to that. But 
Uh, they gave that paper out anyway because I guess they're they're scared of somebody trying something or doing something. So. Well, how did your families feel about it? Did they did they want a ceremony or did they feel left out? Did they uh, care? No. no, I mean we we both had big weddings before um, when, in our first marriages, and you know we, we were at a point in our lives where we made the decision that you know we just didn't want to give all this money to the wedding industry, and you know we loved each other and. You know, it didn't matter if we got married in a, you know, in a ditch, you know, versus, uh, you know, having a big wedding. But yeah. ultimately, it was a positive experience. And how long have you guys been hitched? Uh, well, since October 29th, so a little over six months. Well, you got married around the same time Dilla Hunty did, so. Yeah, it was around then. Congratulations to you both. I appreciate uh, appreciate your call. Anything else, real fast? No, I don't think so. All right, take care of yourself. Thanks. Uh, thanks a bunch. I do have Matt Dillahunty and Beth Presswood next here on the switchboard. But first, his call reminded me of one that I wanted to get to. And I don't know how to pronounce it if it's Randa or Rhonda. R-A-N-D-A. Forgive me. Uh, I'm going to go with Randa. And you can send me hate and death in my email inbox if I screwed that up. Okay. Uh, Randa said Colorado allows self-solemnized Weddings where the couple can essentially marry themselves. They are also called self-uniting marriages or Quaker marriages. You can have witnesses or officiants sign the certificate, but all that's required is the signatures of the husband and wife. So you could literally have a wedding with just the two of you. Randa says, I know of couples who've gone out into the woods or mountains to a special place together. And they said vows, signed, and it's done. Pennsylvania and Wisconsin are the only other states that allow self uniting, but Wisconsin has some weirdness with the marriage possibly not being recognized in all contexts. We planned our wedding in six weeks and learning about the self-solemnizing took a big load off. We didn't have to search for an officiant we liked and who was compatible with our beliefs or lack thereof or pay him. We pieced together a short ceremony from resources we found on the internet and our own likes and interests. Some subtly placed the princess bride and geek references thrown in. We got my dad to, quote, officiate, read the script. We only had 12 immediate family and very close friends in attendance, and the ceremony was held in Cave of the Winds in Manitou Springs. My husband asked me to marry him on top of a 14er, a mountain over 14,000 feet. So a subterranean wedding was a nice counterbalance. Then we all went to the melting pot in Colorado Springs for a fancy four-course fondue meal, we were really able to enjoy the wedding, keep it private and small, and make it our own. I think the self-solemnizing was a key piece in the process. An unknown, unrelated officiant, even a secular one, would have seemed intrusive in such a tiny and intimate ceremony. We did have our wedding photos taken at Gardner the Gods Park. No gods were on the invite list, but we went to their park for pictures. Randa, thanks for a great, great letter. Let's talk to some newlyweds who got hitched only recently. You know him as host of the Atheist Experience, Matt Delahunty, and Beth Presswood, who hosts her own podcast called Godless Bitches. And thank you both for being here. You're welcome. Thanks so much for having us. So your wedding was when? October 30th, 2011. So you guys made a conscious decision, right? No priest, no preacher, no church, no church steeple, no hymns. Oh, absolutely. There was no way we were going to put God into our wedding when we are staunch atheists here. Well, come on. Your family's got to be thinking, well, what about us? Isn't marriage God ordained? Did they freak? They did not freak. Well, the thing about us being godless and shacking up and everything, they were just kind of happy we were getting married at all. So they just kind of had to accept that. Did they attend? My parents attended, and many of Matt's family who could attended. My grandmother and aunt and other family members did not attend. Was it because you were non-believers that they didn't show up? Yes, it was. They just wouldn't be a part of it at all? They said, forget it. We're not even going to go. Well, they refused to acknowledge Matt's existence. Um, <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I don't even talk to them, so... Matt, talk to me about the... Uh, the wedding you had Aaron raw officiate yeah Aaron Aaron's been a, a good friend of ours for a couple of years and it was really easy um, we were talking about what we wanted to do and I wanted to make sure that the wedding um, 
because there were going to be a lot of religious people there, I wanted to make sure that they got there and walked away saying, oh, wow, that was a real wedding. That's a wedding like what we're used to. It just didn't include God stuff. And um, we were sitting around in the living room talking about who are we going to get to, you know, serve as the officiant or, you know, whatever title you happen to use for it. And somebody, I can't remember who suggested Aaron, and I was like, that's great. And Beth just kind of lit up. So we called him and, and said, hey, would you come down and do this? And he was more than willing to come down and, and do the wedding for us. I think Aaron suggested Aaron. Did he? Or Judy did. Well, that's, I'm going to have to start booking myself like that because it worked out great. So what does a non-theistic wedding message contain? Because I mean, you guys are like me. You've probably been to a thousand weddings, mostly because we were dragged there by a female in our family. And <laughs> and, and it was, you know, um, the ring is a symbol. It has no beginning and no end, like the love of our Savior has for us and as we should have for each other. I mean, we've we all heard the tired old wedding the ceremony content before. What constituted your wedding message? Was there one or did he just show up and you guys passed rings and smooched? Oh, there was definitely uh, a message. We uh, we looked it up. We, we did a little research online to find out what other people were doing. And she and I sat down and we pulled stuff from Greta Christina's wedding and things that Hemet Meded posted at uh, Friendly Atheist and put together a script that was very short because, you know, I, I prefer let's get to the let's get to the point and then move on to the party. But um, we actually posted the entire transcript up at the Atheist Experience blog. So everything that was said during the ceremony is available there. Briefly, it was, welcome, everybody. Here's why we're here. A quick declaration of intent because the key or the, the binding factor of a marriage is mutual consent and, and intent. It's not a church. It's not a religion. It's, uh, you know, not even a, a state, although we did go ahead and get a proper wedding certificate or mar marriage license from the state. We had a section with support from the community so that two people in a, in a relationship don't live in isolation. And so we had everybody rise to say that they'd support us, which was kind of fun because they all did. And uh, there was a quick exchange of vows about, you know, being friends and loving. And, you know, there was a lot of traditional stuff in there. We even lit a unity candle out in the wind in, in Texas, which didn't, <laughs> didn't completely work out. Uh, but it was it was nice. So you involve some of the classic wedding traditions. I mean, are you a, are you a romantic, Beth? Um, a little bit. I mean, I cried and stuff, but that is a big softy. He, he almost <laughs> cried too. He He's was such a teddy bear. With tears in his eyes. And there's actually so much about weddings that really aren't religious that you can be very traditional and still be godless. So what'd you do for music? Ours was Landslide by the Dixie Chicks was our processional song. And we also, our first dance was um, It's Your Love, Tim McGraw and Faith Hill. So we had lots of country. Is Matt a, a country music guy? I'm an every music guy. Um, as long as it doesn't suck, there are plenty of country songs that I like. There's rap songs that I like, that opera, you know, whatever. We didn't, I mean, it, it wasn't all country. Our, our recessional was The Beatles, All You Need Is Love. And during the reception, we had uh, Cupid Shuffle and some Black Eyed Peas and all kinds of fun stuff. I have a lot of uh, people who are sending me emails about either they're engaged and about to get married or they want to get married or they got married, but they did it in a church because the expectation of family was, well, think about us. How would your parents feel if you didn't include the name of God or a preacher or any religious traditions in your ceremony? And of course, I can't speak to a secular ceremony. I've never been a part of one my whole life. I've never been to one. So you guys help me out. What advice do you give? I think people should have the wedding that's going to mean something to them. And family, yeah, it's hard to please family. We we were already such public atheists that we didn't even have to worry about that. They were just happy enough we were getting married. The thing is, when you think back in 5, 10, 15, 20 years, you should have had the wedding that you wanted, not that your mom and dad and in-laws wanted. And we both have very religious relatives. Everybody, everybody loved 
the service, the reception, everything. They it was just nothing but compliments. We you know we it was it was a nice day. Um, my folks were happy. Her folks were happy. My uncle, who used to be a missionary, talked about. He actually came up to me to say, you know, did you guys you know write those vows and stuff because it, you included some things that I'd heard before in other secular ceremonies. And you know he he liked what we did, and it's one of the reasons why we went ahead and posted on the blog uh, the full transcript is so that other people could use it because we borrowed from others as well. I mean, you know, it's it's the type of thing where. There are a few categories where, as a community, the atheist community, the secular community, really is still kind of slightly lagging behind. I think in the you know the grieving and dying process, we need some work. We need some work in community building, but also weddings. It's one of those things. I get lots of emails from people saying, "We'd like to get married. We have no idea what to do. Am I stuck doing it in a church? Should I do it in a church just because of my family?" The same questions you're talking about, and you know, by and large. My answer is you better have the wedding that you want. I absolutely agree with Beth. Did you find that, you know, Natalie and I have been together for, I don't know how many years, four or five. Do you find that people were trying to minimize a relationship that was not a quote unquote marital relationship, right? I mean, you two had been together for a while. You had this, you were a family. Did you find that people on the outside were like, but they're not married as if to minimize what you had together? Never from secular people, an atheist, from our families, yes. When we went to Christmas at you know Matt's family, he had to sleep in the basement and I had to sleep upstairs. <laughs> but because we had a little ceremony and a piece of paper, we could sleep in the same bed at the family's house the next time, which you know doesn't even make sense. But actually, um, I've had people ask, why did we even get married? Well, that's a good question. I mean, what did it do for you? Well, it didn't necessarily make our relationship any better. We were still Matt and Beth like we we had been. There were obviously benefits with the family. The family considers us more permanent and more serious than we had been. And other people do. There's a huge difference when you say, my boyfriend, Matt. And that could be anything. That could be, you know, just two weeks in or two years in or 20 years in. But if you say my husband, people know what you're talking about. Part of it was, I'll be honest, part of it was the tax breaks. Um, we, <laughs> really? <laughs> people keep coming up to me and saying, hey, so how's married life? And I say, it's exactly like not being married, except there's a tax break involved. Wow. Um, because our the nature of our relationship didn't really change at all. We had had a discussion, you know, the, I don't know if you were familiar, but Brad Pitt had famously said he wouldn't get married until everybody could get married, you know, as kind of a statement of support for marriage equality. And I actually was a fan of that and was going along those lines. Now that we have, or we're getting closer to marriage equality, you know, same-sex couples can marry in more and more places. It became less of a big deal, but it just... I, I don't even know that I can explain why. It's just kind of, you know, this is – maybe it's the norm. Maybe we were pushed into it by the societal norms. Maybe it was a way of kind of cementing things between us. But we had been together and actually living together for a while. And when I decided – you know, we we had already discussed it. We knew eventually, we, yeah, we'd probably end up married. And uh, we – you know, it wasn't even a big surprise. And, you know, I proposed. And then we – set out to uh, plan the big day. And I think that having a party, having a public declaration so that everybody's aware that, yep, you guys are a couple now, I think there's some value in that. Do I think it's critical and essential? Absolutely not. They talked about the, the sanctity of marriage. The divorce rate's insane. People are cheating on their spouses. There's nothing special or secret or super about marriage. But it is the kind of thing that has a little, I don't know, gravitas or something to publicly stand up. We know that when people publicly declare a belief, they're less likely to change their mind. So there may be something to that. Hey, Beth, how did he propose? What did he do? <laughs> oh, this is hilarious. Um, okay, so it was a Saturday, and Matt was like, oh, we have to stop and get a package at the apartment office. I bought some magic cards online. Magic the Gathering, that would be. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever. So we stopped, and he went in and 
got stuff. I didn't even really see that he didn't actually bring a package back because it was magic cards, whatever. So we went out to eat and we came back and we were preparing for the nonprofits podcast. So we were, you know, setting up the table and setting up the chairs and all that. And then he was like, hey, come here. Okay. So he brought out this little box and his hands were just shaking all over the place. <laughs> and he was like, will you marry me? And I was like, ah, and yes. And, um, and then like 20 minutes later, people were coming over to do the nonprofits podcast. My recollection of the event is mildly different from hers. I don't think it's fair to say that my hands were shaking all over the place. And she didn't actually say yes right away. She just kind of screamed and, and ran away. And I was like, what the hell did <laughs> she was more interested in running over to Facebook to post that we were engaged than she was in actually telling me that we were engaged. She's proud of you. Wants to show you off. You guys are a great couple. I mean, it's it's and it's nice. Honestly, it's. It's nice to see a couple of people who are out there on the front lines of rationalism who uh, who can stand shoulder to shoulder. Any advice, final advice or words on the issue of, uh, of marriage without religion, marriage without church, marriage without pastors, marriage without God? Anything you want to toss out? Do what you want to do. If marriage is what you want to do, do it your way. And um, we've had friends who've had all kinds of different weddings, incredibly non-traditional weddings. And as long as it's the thing that they enjoy, to hell with the rest of the world. Anything else, Beth? Are you good? I'm good. Let me slug the shows real quick. The Atheist Experience, you're all over the internet, all over YouTube. Where's the best place to hook up? The easiest thing is atheist-experience.com. There's the whole archives there, full episodes. You can watch the newest episodes live streaming. And then Nonprofits has been hit or miss lately, but that's nonprofitsradio.com. And finally, for the, you know, so that you can get the, uh, the link to people, freethoughtblogs.com slash AXP is the address for the Atheist Experience blog. And in, well, it was the day after the wedding, so October 31st, 2011, there's an entry that is the wedding transcript. It's everything we said, everything Aaron said for the whole ceremony. And people, please use whatever you want or, or don't use it. Beth, is your podcast weekly, biweekly, monthly, and where is it? It is generally weekly, um, godlessbitches.podbean.com and also on Facebook. I'll put links to both of those in the description box of this video. Thank you guys for taking a couple of minutes to talk about marriage and, and best wishes with yours. Thanks, Seth. Thanks. I had a letter from a young lady who said, please refer to me as Miss Atheist in Salt Lake City, Utah. She says, I grew up LDS, Latter-day Saints, Mormon. When I got engaged, we'd been dating for six months and we decided to get married three months later. This is the way it's done in Utah. By the way, did I mention I was only 20? I was considered an old maid. By all my married friends. We got married in the Salt Lake City Latter-day Saints Temple in March of 2008. It wasn't very special. I couldn't wear my wedding dress and there were about 60 other brides getting married there the same day. I didn't feel beautiful. I didn't feel special. I had to wear a simple white gown, like a nightgown. I couldn't have my sisters there because they weren't worthy enough to attend, which basically means you don't give us enough tithing so you can't come in. I really tried to make the most of it. I was super LDS and believed with all my heart, but something just didn't feel right while I was at the temple. They gave me a special name. I was instructed to never tell anyone. I later found out that this name was not special either. Every single woman who went through the temple the same day got the same name. I'd also like to add that my husband knew my name, but I couldn't know his. You see, when I die, I can't get into heaven without him. When he calls my special name, I am then allowed in with him, where he'll have the opportunity to take on more wives. Like I said, my wedding day was not special. I just thought about how excited my spouse was getting more wives when we die. If you can't already tell by this email, I left the church shortly after our marriage, about six months. 
I read into the history of the church and I was horrified. I studied religion, mythology. I was obsessed with finding truth. When I talked to my husband about it, unfortunately, he didn't share the same feelings, which resulted in the demise of our marriage. But I gained a newfound passion for learning everything. I feel like I could write a novel about my experiences growing up in the church, my wedding, and my departure. So I hope I've made this clear and to the point. I've never been happier. Thank you for all you do, Seth. Thank you for your inspiration, your rants, your participation in this life. To me, you're up there with Dawkins. Oh, stop. To me, you're up there with Dawkins, Hitchens, Harris, Dennett, and Neil deGrasse Tyson. Not remotely. But thank you. She says, continue what you're doing. You're making a difference. Miss Atheist. My heart breaks hearing that story. Hearing about this beautiful person minimized and marginalized and what is special about that day essentially stripped away. It wasn't really a wedding from him to her. It was like he was married to the church and she sort of tagged along as an afterthought. I mean, how could a wife feel special knowing that his value is so much greater and they reward that value with more wives, <laughs> with people that will take time away from the union they're supposed to have together, where his affections are constantly divided? Is he just going to parcel out a piece of his heart for her and then a piece of his heart for somebody else? And call it marriage. I interviewed a guy named Stan, who was part of the Mormon church. We actually did a video. Uh, what did I call it? <laughs> I think I called it Diary of, a, of an Ex-Mormon or Confession, something of an Ex-Mormon. And he, to he talked about, I mean, talk about it, a jacked up, controlling, secretive, weird atmosphere. I'm sorry, any cult that ships teenagers off for two years without any family contact. I'm sorry. And whatever they're doing behind closed doors must be, must be exposed and stopped. But you know, it's funny. She ends her letter with a positive and it's the same way most of us feel. Yeah, it was a bitch when it happened. It was really hard. It was heartbreaking. It was terrible. Then I felt like, wow, how am I going to get out of all this? But when you finally get out and she said, what she said, let me find her words. She said, um, a newfound passion for learning. Oh my gosh. You start drinking in all the stuff that you finally realize you missed. You just, you can't get enough. Can't get enough. Never too late to light the fires of curiosity, the passion to know more. So I'm happy for you. And I appreciate you sharing your story and thank you very much for the kind words. I am and will never be anywhere on the, on the uh, tier of any of the names you mentioned. Honestly, I sort of fill a different role, I think. And I, I own that role. I mean, I, I, I'll take it. Um, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm not an astrophysicist. I am a guy who came from the cradle of... Protestant Christianity was put out there from a very early age because I was this clean cut young man with an ability to communicate. And I was placed out in the forefront in the spotlight to be a representative for my generation and to reach others for Jesus Christ. And I was a broadcaster and a public figure in that way. But I was always just an every guy. And I think that's part of what people respond to in this show is that it's about everyday things. It's about, you know, it's about a guy who doesn't have all the answers, a guy who is feeling his way in the dark sometimes, just trying to figure out what comes next. And because it is a shared experience and because iron sharpens iron, geez, even this week, I'm working on a video called Afterlife, which will release at the Oklahoma Free Thought Convention. And I, I ran into a snag where I, I, there was some information that I did not, I just didn't have, I did not know and I thought, I, I can't include this in the project unless we, unless I figure it out. Well, when you have a Facebook page with 75,000 subscribers, you'd be an idiot not to pull that resource together and tap some people on the shoulder and say, hey, 
Anyone know about this? Can anyone verify this? I'm always asking questions. I'm always going, I have no idea. What do you think? What's your experience? What documentation do you have? So, I mean, I, I'll, I'm not a, you know, Christopher Hitchens used to walk. He, I mean, he would be humble about some things, but, you know, he honestly, he knew when he walked out, he knew I'm, I'm Christopher Hitchens and you're not, <laughs> you know, you can just sense a little bit of that. <laughs> you will never catch that with me. It's always going to be kind of a different flavor, but, but uh, you're very kind and I appreciate you very, very much. I'm looking for uh, Stacy on my switchboard. Hello. Is this Stacy? This is me. You have been shooting video photography. What do you do at weddings? What's your role? Just still photography. And how many, I mean, have you done more than half a dozen, right? I mean, you've got some experience. Oh, yeah. I've got uh, probably four or 500 under my belt now. Four or 500? Yeah. How is this not crazy stressful? I mean, you're talking about the, the you know, the mother-in-law's freaked out and the wedding coordinator and the bride, her, you know, she's in tears and something went wrong and there's an emergency and this wasn't perfect. I mean, is it a high stress, just jacked up environment or do you really get joy out of doing this? I do. I absolutely love it. There's, there's no better career for me. Um, people are all happy and they're all dressed up and everybody looks great and feels great and all they want to do is party and have a good time. So yeah, it's awesome. But I, I was very, very lucky in the beginning because I had some great local photographers to work with in the beginning days where I was just an assistant and I got to watch how they handled all the craziness. Have you seen any secular sort of non-religious or at least not traditionally religious weddings that you can speak to? Um, one Wicca wedding. I shot one Wicca wedding. It was an outdoor wedding and it had an officiant. I don't know how they're licensed by the government, but um, they had an officiant. I, I shot two lesbian weddings actually as well, and they were also just officiant. Now, I don't know how they get licensed by the government to uh, marry people, but um, they're generally just, I find, those, I find those ceremonies a lot more heartfelt. Because um, they're not just a by-the-numbers walkthrough of the, of the religious chants and religions and prayers and whatnot, but it's more personal. It's about the people. Yes, yes. And out of the several hundred weddings that I've photographed, I think I've managed to hold back my own emotions, listening to speeches and things like that. And I and one really stands out to me because people always ask me, do you ever like cry yourself <laughs> when you hear people sometimes they have some pretty sappy stories during speeches? And no, I don't. I can hold it back for most of the most of the time. Um, but one in particular stands out to me. And it was a lesbian couple that had been together. They were a couple of older ladies and they had been together for, oh, my goodness. 35 years and their speeches to each other when they were exchanging their vows, just, I was sitting on the floor <laughs> shooting, shooting the exchange of the rings and the vows. And I started crying and I'm like, Oh, is anybody looking at me? <laughs> and are, are, will these pictures be in focus? Because I can't tell. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, have you yeah. seen any over the top religious stuff, anything where it's really jacked up? Have you seen the converse of the, of the atheist? Oh yeah, yeah. I've seen um, I've seen where the ceremony was double the length that it usually is, and their eyes are closed and their hands are up in the sky, and they're chanting and they're singing and they're crying and everything else. And yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> and do you ever just want to? I mean, you're an atheist, and you're in church yeah. all the time. I mean, hundreds of times. Wow. What's yeah, going on in your head? How do you deal? <laughs> I'm the only atheist that's in a that's in a church just about every weekend for five months out of the year. It's crazy. <laughs> it's almost though, isn't it? Almost like you can treat it almost forensically, like you are have an outside in perspective where you you're not suffocated by the dogma, but you can come in as an observer and you can watch a lot of the a lot of what happens in the church with sort of a different eye. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, it doesn't really bother me. I have respect for people as, you know, as other human beings. I don't judge because they believe or anything like that. I have lots of friends and family that are believers, but I don't. Uh, so, you know, I mean, I, I just look at it as part of the job. And, you know, every once in a while, it is a little bit kind of obnoxious to look at these 18 foot crosses and life size Jesuses and things like that. You know, it's a little, but I just ignore it for the most part. 
because you do great work and because you have helped this community and you've helped me tremendously and, and whatnot, I'll be shameless and just say, what's your freaking website? Because I manipulate images and I shoot video and I composite motion graphics and I, I edit music, but I have really no gift for the beginning, for the creating from scratch. That is something I've always wished I had. And it's something that you just do naturally. And I'd like everyone to, if they can, go take a look at your site. What's the website? Oh, thank you, Seth. It's uh, stacyfox.ca. So it's triple W S T A C E Y F O X dot C A. Stacy, thanks for spending a few minutes with me. I much appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Seth. All right. Take care. 845, you're on the Thinking Atheist podcast. Who's this? All right. Hey, how's it going, Seth? I'm I, uh, doing well. I What's met you going at the Reason on? Rally. We met at the Reason Rally? Yeah, I proudly shook your hand at the Reason Rally. Was some... I enjoyed being out there. <laughs> so talk to me. Are you, did you have a secular wedding, or what's your take on all this? Yes. Actually, I'm an atheist, and I got married last summer, and my wife is a, a believer. And so we had the conversation early on, you know, like I told her I wouldn't be comfortable participating in a religious ceremony, and she understood that. And so I said, like, you know, let's elope. And she was like, well, I kind of want my mom to be there. So I was like, okay, so she wanted to get married in her backyard, but I still wanted to go away. And the, the most important thing to remember is it's your wedding. You can do whatever you want, you know. You don't have to do what somebody else is doing. So we like to go to Martha's Vineyard, and Martha's Vineyard is surrounded by lighthouses. And so while we were up there, we were looking at these lighthouses, and we're like, hey, let's get married at a lighthouse. That's a great idea. So that's what we did. We uh, contacted the people in charge of the lighthouses. We paid a small fee. They said, uh, yeah, lots of people get married at our lighthouses. Just pick one. So we picked one that we liked, and we hired a justice of the peace. I called her up ahead of time. I said, listen, I really don't want a, uh, any kind of religious thing in my, in my wedding. And she said, I completely understand. Most people who call the justice of the peace, that's what they want. Because I, I had actually been to a courthouse wedding once where uh, the judge pulled out the Bible in the middle of it and started reading scripture. And afterwards, my friend was like, well, I didn't want that. <laughs> So you got to let them know ahead of time, like, okay, this is what I want, you know. But for so the long. rest of your life, you'll be able to tell people that we were married in a lighthouse. And they will look exactly. at you with envy and go, that is awesome. What a mm -hmm. great idea. In the back of my mind, I had that Benjamin Franklin quote, you know, lighthouses are more important than churches. <laughs> oh, and yeah. uh, <laughs> I know, right? Like, I didn't tell my wife that. I was like, oh, yeah, lighthouse is nice. Ha, 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 ha. Fantastic. That's fantastic. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, this, the same weekend that uh, we got married at the White House on an island in the ocean, President Obama was coming in for his vacation. So when we took the ferry out to the island, we had uh, Coast Guard escorts with machine gun boats. <laughs> Boy, so you, we like, if Whoa. you frame those photos right, it looks awesome, doesn't it? You guys look <laughs> like you looks like the royal wedding or something. <laughs> I know, right? We were like, well, our, our wedding is so exclusive, we have machine gun escorts to it. <laughs> That's right. You can never be too careful out there. Yeah, well, just tell them it's because you were atheists that you had to have an armed guard. <laughs> so let's see what happens. <laughs> well, thanks for sharing your story. It was uh, great to talk to you, man. Congrats to you and your bride, okay? Hey, thanks a lot, man. Take it easy. Ashley sent me a letter. She said, my fiance and I are planning an atheist wedding, and I can't say how difficult it is. Not because we're worried about our family's reaction to a God-free ceremony, but because we can't figure out how to fill the time without Bible verses, religious acknowledgments, or a priest telling us what the nature of our bond should be. We're worried about having a ceremony that's over before anyone even knows it started. Luckily, we found a few great communities on Reddit and offbeatbride.com that have shown us some fantastic options on how to create a ceremony that will be both meaningful and unique to us. Otherwise, our wedding planning is really focused more on us as people than on our lack of religious beliefs. Trying to find wedding accessories that don't have any religious affiliation can sometimes be a bit frustrating, but if you're creative with Google, nothing's too difficult. I think our wedding will be perfect for us and anyone who raises their eyebrows at the lack of Corinthians in our ceremony can go pound sand. Can't wait to wait to listen to the show. Hopefully we can hear some creative ways to fill our ceremony. Ashley, congratulations on the upcoming wedding. Uh, I would encourage you to maybe go to the uh, Facebook page 
and just post up there uh, or, or drop me a line and I'll post it for you. And you can follow the thread as to unique wedding ideas. You know, people are so amazingly creative. Just again, I, you know, make it about you, make it about your squeeze and try not to make the bridesmaids look pregnant and you should be good. <laughs> you should be just fine on Skype. I have a geek girl. Thanks for being patient with me. Who's this? Hello. What's your name? My name's Ashton. Ashton, thanks for calling. Are you a bride or a bride to be? Um, actually, my husband and I have been married for a year now. And a he's, uh, he's here too. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. What's your name, sir? Uh, John. Thank you both for calling. So you got married in a secular ceremony. What? What happened? Well, when we were engaged for over two years, and during that time, my husband really became an atheist and he really didn't come out to his family. So they were still pushing for the whole religious wedding. And I told him flat out, it was nothing that I wanted. So things got a little crazy. His mom and his dad got upset with us because we told them eventually that we weren't getting married in a church by their pastor. We were going to get married at a barn with um, the ceremony outside and the reception in the, uh, in the barn itself. And then we had a, a good friend actually do the ceremony for us. And we had no religion in it whatsoever. There was no word of God or anything. We actually had a reading from Plato about homosexuality and equality. So that just kind of fueled the fire more. But in the end... We so loved at, it. at a heterosexual union, you included uh, a oh. sort of a pro homosexuality excerpt yeah. into the ceremony. Yeah, yeah. Well, how does one squeeze that in? I mean, how do you segue from well, the the whole the whole reading is very very touching, talking about there being three kinds of people in the world: men and women who love each other, men and men who love each other, and women and women who love each other. It's really a really nice reading. Our friend that married us had actually, he's performed like over 10 weddings for other couples and stuff. And he had someone else have this reading and he showed it to us. And we just found it really touching and meaningful without being overly political. So when you go down that road, is everybody that's religious in the audience starting to squirm? Are they sitting on their hands? Are they bolting <laughs> for the door? What was the, what was the vibe in the room? Well, enough we have had even the most religious people come up to us and go that is the most beautiful ceremony i have ever heard so then, you know many of them maybe have never seen or heard it done another way other than the the ring is a symbol it has no yeah, beginning yeah. and no <laughs> end you know i mean they they finally got an original very touching very personal look into, uh, you know, how two people unite their lives and thought, shit, I wish yeah. I'd done that when we had done yeah, it, you well, know? And my husband and I, we've, we've been together for over six years. He was my high school sweetheart and stuff. So it was like, it was really sweet. Everyone talked about, you know, how perfect we are for each other and stuff. And they, they kind of knew that no matter what the ceremony was going to be like, that it would be special. So and, if you'd already been together though, and, and this is a question that I think Matt and Beth were kind of trying to address. And it's something I think we all talk about is what does the marriage union bring to you that you did not have before? Does it just kind of a way of reaffirming to each other that commitment? Why get married? Why'd you guys do it? Um, I always wanted to be married. I always wanted to be the bride. I am a very crafty and creative individual. I literally made everything for the wedding. So I wanted that chance to show off my creative skills if I can be that, um, you know, selfish That's awesome. about that. <laughs> what about you, sir? I mean, did you, I mean, were you, you're in a barn. What, what, what was the attire? Were you in a tux? Were you in uh, Levi's? Uh, what? No, I was in a suit and the groomsmen were in suits and the bridesmaids were in dresses. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't. <laughs> It, it, it was a restored barn that's used for parties and, and weddings and such. So it wasn't like well, that's there wasn't hay everywhere. No, that's what I've got in my head. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, that's exactly what I've got in my head. <laughs> well, I would also like to say that my bridesmaids' dresses. What we did instead of me having to go and pick out hideous things, 
every girl got to pick out the dress that she wanted that looked the best on her. Wow. All I asked was that it was a shade of blue. Now, am I and crazy when I say you. that bridesmaids' dresses are almost always the least complimentary, least flattering things you can put on a body? They, they really can be, unless you know, like, what what your bridesmaid needs, you know, shape-wise and stuff. And I didn't have them go to, like, David's Bridal and pay outrageous money for him. I had one girl who found her dress in a resale shop for $5, looked amazing on her. Because normally so. it's like, look, here's some really shiny but a monumentally cheap fabric. Let's slap this on you with some really bad shoes. And now we're going to parade <laughs> you out there. I mean, I just think to myself, are these poor, poor women? And you know they're not going to say no. It's like, would you be yeah. one of my bridesmaids? What are they going to say? Oh, I'd be honored. Oh, my God. I'm going to have to wear that. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, all of my girls were, were happy with everything. So, Well, but I'm glad that you two had a wedding that was about you. That's awesome. Anything well, else? I don't really hear much uh, people talking about what life is like after the wedding. I've had a lot of problems with my mother-in-law side of the family after the wedding, after they realized that I was an atheist and my husband finally came out as an atheist and stuff. They actually um, refuse to talk to me, completely ignore me. They've told me I'm going to kill my 98-year-old grandmother-in-law because I'm an atheist. And it's just, it's a little bit stressful. And I didn't think, I, I thought that after the wedding, it wouldn't be quite as bad as <laughs> what it is, but it has been. Unbelievable <laughs> emotional blackmail. If you live your own worldview, you will be responsible for the death of a 98-year-old woman. I mean, how sad and pathetic and desperate is that? It is, and it, it hurts so much. And, like, the thing is, they still talk to my husband all the time and stuff. They're perfectly friendly, friendly with him, but they've pulled me to the side and go, it's all your fault that he thinks the way he does. Unbelievable. I just kind of smile and wave and, you know, walk away. But Reminds me of that do? story about, uh, you know, a little boy who came in and said, uh, you know, 90 or 8 year old grandma's reading her, reading her Bible again. Why she always read the Bible? And his mom said, well, she's studying for her final. <laughs> so <it's just> one <laughs> <of those things. laughs> Congratulations to you two and keep your chin up. Trust me, there's a whole community of people out here who get you and support you and wish you the best. OK. Yeah. Thanks, Thank you. Jeff. Y'all take care. All right, bye. I'm trying to get the barn. I know it's like a sure it's a nice facility, but when you say barn, I've still got that image. And, you know, <laughs> these, I mean, there's hay and everybody's in flannel, and I just I'm trying to get that out of my head. Michael on Skype, thanks for your patience on hold. You're on the Thinking Atheist podcast. What's going on? Hi, how you doing? I'm good. What do you have for us? I am single right now, um, but I'm just going to let you know what I think about this whole uh, thing. My plan is to have a Pastafarian wedding uh, when I'm older. So I'm going to be wearing a spaghetti strainer on my head. And I'm going to be like, I'm going to like have a lot of spaghetti for the reception. So it should be a good time. I can see the wedding cake already. Oh, yeah. With his holiness, his divinity, his divine noodliness. Exactly. His, right there in cake form during the reception. That's brilliant going to be expensive though Exp well, well, spaghetti is not expensive you mean having the cake done yeah but having it as a spaghetti cake yeah, and the cake's gonna be expensive. but you have no candidates yet for these nuptials i mean we're still sort of on the prowl are we yes i am not very old i'm only 18 right now but um actually to be honest i'm going to be going into a uh, royal military college i'm thinking of victory lap first and then i hopefully i'm going to be applying to go in and hopefully if I get in, I'll probably have a military wedding instead. Hopefully I'll try and make it more secular. Well, you way. realize, of course, that your bride-to-be is going to want to have a say. So when you fall in love and you inform her that I would like a pasta strainer on my head <laughs> and, 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 and the flying spaghetti monster in cake form and to have the, uh, have the justice of the peace read from the book of the flying spaghetti, that may not necessarily go over with her. You know, you might prepare yourself for that. Well, that's why I have plan B. If she is a religion, let's just make an example, like she's a Mormon or something. Like we can have the flying spaghetti monster on one part of the cake and Joseph Smith on the other side. 
and then once we read through the Gospel of the Flying Spaghetti Monster and the ceremony, we can read through the Book of Mormon. Man, I wish you, however that, you, (laughs) you, and a Mormon and the Joseph Smith cake. And I'm, I'm already, if you need a good shaman, you just call me. I'm, I'll give you the hookup. Okay. My friend. Awesome. (laughs) And like, it'd be weird because my uh, family, at least my uh, mom's side, which is Indian, really, really, really Roman Catholic. Like, I'll give you an example. Um, when I was about 10, every night for about three hours, we would pray to Yahweh and do the rosary and all that. And it was it was a good time. But uh, I don't think they would like so much uh, me wearing a spaghetti strainer on my head during my wedding either. Well, as long as it's about you and your bride, knock yourself out. Michael, thanks for the call. Much appreciated. You're welcome. Reminds me of that guy who uh, got permission, legal permission to have his driver's license photo taken with the pasta strainer on his head for religious reasons. Uh, Dennis sent me an email that I will close the show with. He said, Susan and I are both atheists and after living together for several years, decided to get married so we can be authorized to make medical and financial decisions for each other legally. We already were completely committed to each other, so the marriage was nothing more than a legal contract. In our atheist meetup group, one of the gentlemen's a former Baptist minister who kept his state license, although he's now an atheist. He performed the ceremony and signed the paperwork for the state. We had a beautiful ceremony. The former minister, his wife, a photographer, and another couple as witnesses in a local private park where we had a membership. It was a beautiful April morning with the birds singing in a flower garden. The sun was shining. We could not have asked for a better setting. We wrote our own secular vows that were not only beautiful, but expressed a personal touch that the canned vows used by most ministers never approach. I realize it'll make the message long, but I've attached them below. Well, I'm not going to include the vows. What I would like to include, Dennis, here is, is you pasted in the official address And I felt like uh, the vows you can post on Facebook, but I wanted this to kind of cap my show with your permission. Dennis pasted this in. It said, in marriage, two people turn to each other in search of a greater fulfillment than either can achieve alone. Marriage is a bold step taken together into an unknown future. It's risking who we are for the sake of who we can be. Only in giving of ourselves fully and sharing our lives with another can the mysterious process of growth take place. Only in loyalty and devotion bestowed upon another can that which is eternal in life emerge and be known. Two among us who have stood apart come together now to declare their love and to be united in marriage. The words we say today have no magic or prophetic powers. The power of the wedding vows is simply a reflection of a reality that already exists in the hearts and minds of those two people. Dennis and Susan, nothing I can say, nothing you can say to each other will ensure a long and happy, satisfying and committed marriage. Only your love for one another and your integrity to make your commitment real can do that. Dennis, thanks for the message. And thanks to everybody for another great podcast. Next week, we'll do it again, Tuesday, 6 p.m. U.S. Central. All the details, of course, will be on our Facebook page. Thank you again for sharing your stories, your experiences, your perspectives, your opinions. We'll see you next time on the Thinking Atheist radio podcast. Follow the Thinking Atheist on Facebook and Twitter. Watch dozens of original videos on the Thinking Atheist YouTube channel. And visit our website for resources, links, contact information, the editor's blog, and more. TheThinkingAtheist.com